Hello friends, welcome to Medico Mello. Let's start by the proverb there is no greater weapon than a prepared mind. Yes, if you are determined by heart, then nobody can stop you from doing it. So, let's go into our topic adrenergic system and drugs. Last day we have discussed about cholinergic system and their functions. Today Regarding our adrenergic system, the neurotransmitters are noradrenaline, adrenaline and dopamine. So what about the receptors? There are two receptors, alpha receptors and beta receptors. Alpha receptors has two subtypes, alpha 1 and alpha 2. Whereas beta receptors has got three subtypes, that is beta 1, beta 2 and beta 3. So coming into the functions of these receptors, First of all, the alpha-1 receptors, they are seen in blood vessels. So what's happening there? It causes vasoconstriction. That is, due to vasoconstriction, there increases the peripheral resistance. As a result of that, the blood pressure is increasing. Next is alpha-1 receptors found in the smooth muscles of genitourinary system. So due to this alpha-1 stimulation, the smooth muscle contracts resulting in in males ejaculation in females uterine contraction and in the urinary bladder the smooth muscle contraction causes trigon to contract resulting in urine retention alpha 1 receptors are again seen in intestine that is the gut causing intestinal relaxation it is again seen in the liver by stimulating them it causes glycogenolysis that is breakdown of the glycogen into glucose to produce more amount of energy alpha 1 receptors are again seen in eyes what is happening there it is present in the iris by stimulating it it causes the radial muscle contraction resulting in dilatation of the pupil known as the midriasis alpha 1 receptors we have seen it causes vasoconstriction of the blood vessels so in the ciliary vessels in the eye the vasoconstriction occurs and as a result it causes reduced aqueous secretion so alpha 1 agonist drugs if we are giving them it causes reduced aqueous secretion so this alpha 1 agonist can be used for the treatment of glaucoma so that the intraocular pressure is reduced due to the reduced aqueous secretion next is regarding alpha 2 receptors it is seen in the blood vessels and it causes vasoconstriction this is similar to the action of the alpha 1 receptors so as a result there is increased blood pressure alpha 2 receptors are seen in the pancreas it causes decreased insulin secretion it also causes the platelet aggregation there are some more functions of the alpha 2 receptors but we are discussing only these three next is regarding the beta receptors first of all the beta 1 receptor it is mainly present in the heart and it causes increased heart rate increased cardiac contractility and increased velocity of the conduction and as a result the beta 1 receptor is a total cardiac stimulant it is also seen in the kidneys and it causes the renin secretion by the JG cells next is about the beta 2 receptors they are seen in many areas first of all the beta 2 receptors are seen in the blood vessels and it causes vasodilatation this is just opposite to the action of the alpha receptors in the blood vessels beta 2 receptors are again seen in the smooth muscles of various parts of the body by stimulating the beta 2 receptors, there occurs the relaxation of the smooth muscles. So, first of all, in the bronchi, it causes relaxation of the bronchial smooth muscles, causing bronchodilatation. It has got a very high clinical significance. Next is in the intestine. It causes relaxation of the intestinal smooth muscles. Next is its location in the urinary bladder. This beta 2 receptors in the smooth muscles of the urinary bladder causes the detrusor to relax and it causes urine retention we have seen that in alpha receptors that is alpha 1 especially causes the trigon to contract resulting in the urine retention 
so both alpha 1 and beta 2 receptors combine to cause the urine retention next is its location in the uterus it causes the relaxation of the uterine muscles and this is just opposite to the action of the alpha receptors in the uterus where it causes the uterine contraction next is beta 2 receptors located in the liver and the skeletal muscles in both it causes glycogenolysis that is a breakdown of the glycogen to produce glucose and some other bright products in liver it causes increased production of the glucose causing increased levels of the glucose in the blood not as hyperglycemia but in the skeletal muscles it results in increased lactic acids known as hyperlactic acidemia this is for producing more amount of the energy in the body next is its location in the eyes the beta 2 if stimulated in the eye causes increased aqueous secretion and this is just opposite to the action of the alpha receptors in the eyes where these alpha receptors causes reduced aqueous secretion so only if we are using a beta 2 antagonist then we are able to decrease the aqueous secretion so beta 2 antagonist and alpha 2 agonist if combined in a glaucoma patient then it may reduce the intraocular pressure by decreasing the aqueous secretion next is about beta 3 receptors which has, which are mainly located in the adipose tissues if stimulated it causes lipolysis and as a result it causes increased blood free fatty acids and increased calorie genesis and also thermogenesis that is production of heat and energy so as these receptors are causing breakdown of the fat it can be used as anti-obesity drugs but due to some other side effects they are less used nowadays these are the nutshell about the receptors of the adrenergic system so from this we can conclude that in the heart there are two receptors acting on it one from the adrenergic system another from the cholinergic system that is beta 1 from the adrenergic system has got a stimulatory effect on the heart that is it increases the heart rate and the cardiac contractility also the velocity of the conduction is increased but the m2 receptors in the heart causes uh, opposite action to that of the beta 1 that is an inhibitory action it causes reduced heart rate reduced velocity of conduction and reduced cardiac contractility so beta 1 acts just opposite to the m2 receptors in the heart in smooth muscles this m3 has got an excitatory action that is it causes the smooth muscle contraction whereas beta 2 receptors causes smooth muscle relaxation so beta 2 is acting just opposite to that m3 in the smooth muscles for example this m3 causes the bronchospasm whereas the beta 2 causes bronchodilatation so beta 1 for m2 in the heart then beta 2 for m3 in the smooth muscles next is about the actions of adrenaline in our body assume a situation when you have been chased by a dog or when a dog is trying to attack you then the level of the adrenaline increases in your blood and it has got many effects so due to the adrenaline effect the causes dilated pupils the skin will be pale or flushed you will feel trembling and your heart beats faster and your breathing also increases and this is the fight or flight response let's go into the depth regarding this adrenaline rush what happens to your heart your heart rate increases there increases the force of contraction and also the velocity this is via the beta 1 receptors next is its effect on the blood vessels it has both vasoconstriction and vasodilatation effects the vasoconstriction effect is at the alpha receptors and it is seen in the cutaneous membrane in the mucous membrane and in the renal beds due to this vasoconstriction in the renal beds there is renal cutoff 
that is the blood supply to the kidneys are being cut off and is diverted to some other areas where the blood is needed the most they are the region of this vasodilatation they act by the beta 2 receptors and seen in skeletal muscles liver and the coronaries that is skeletal muscles by getting more amount of blood we are able to run or fight the situation in the liver due to the more amount of the blood the liver get more amount of the metabolites so that it can produce more amount of energy to tackle the situation in the coronaries by vasodilatation more amount of blood is supplied to the cardiac muscles so that your heart may pump more effectively and more fastly next is its adrenaline effects on the lungs it causes bronchodilatation by beta 2 receptors by that bronchodilatation we are able to breathe more easily and get more amount of oxygen to our blood by its action on the alpha 1 receptors in the eyes it causes midriasis that is dilatation of the pupil so that we are able to observe the situation with a wide opened eye next is its action in the urinary bladder it causes urine retention next on the liver and the skeletal muscles it causes glycogenolysis and lipolysis that is breakdown of the glycogen and breakdown of the fat producing more amount of energy to tackle the situation regarding your blood pressure it increases it is due to an alpha predominant activity than the beta 2 why because beta 2 is a vasodilator but alpha is a vasoconstrictor but as alpha is predominant than beta 2 the net total effect is vasoconstriction next is its effect on the cns it causes alertness it increases your concentration but you feel restlessness and tremors these are the effects of the adrenaline in the body next are some adrenergic drugs that we use for therapies first of all it is the pressure agents that is those drugs that increases your blood pressure example is noradrenaline dopamine and phenylephrine how they're acting it is by the alpha receptor activity that is both alpha 1 and alpha 2 by that it causes vasoconstriction and hence increases the peripheral resistance in the blood vessels so as a result they can be used in the management of shock next are some cardiac stimulants examples are adrenaline and dobutamine how they are acting they act at the beta 1 receptors it increases the heart rate the force and the conduction so as a result these can be used in the management of the cardiogenic shock and more especially in the anaphylaxis next are some bronchodilators examples are salbutamol tebutalin and salmetrol they act at beta 2 receptors causing the bronchial smooth muscles to relax so they can be used in the treatment of the bronchial asthma and copd along with the anticholinergics that we have discussed before examples ipratropium and tiotropium they act as antagonists to the m3 receptors next are some nasal decongestants examples are xylometosolin oxymetosolin and nafazolin they act at alpha receptors causing local vasoconstriction next are some cns stimulants examples are amphetamine and dexamphetamine they act via some serotonergic noradrenaline and dopamine receptors in the brain next are some uterine relaxants examples are ritrodrine salbutamol and terbutalin we are familiar with the salbutamol and terbutalin used as bronchodilators so here also it acts as beta 2 receptor levels and causes the smooth muscle relaxation in the uterus so they can be used in obstetric procedures next group of drug are anorectics that is drugs that cause reduced foot craving examples are fenfluramine and dexfenfluramine how they are acting they act by increasing the serotonergic transmission 
that is 5-HT transmission. Some other drugs are also available that act via noradrenaline or dopamine receptors. These are the nutshell of the adrenergic system in our body. Thank you for watching this video. Please like, share and subscribe. Thank you.